All right, so that last chapter might have just been a bit boring, you might think, but welcome to your homework, the entire reason I get to do this, and I'm excited to actually do this, which is mazes. All right, so let's go ahead and get running with your homework. So we're going to compile it, and we're going to run it, and this is what your homework will look like. It will generate a maze. I use a very boring algorithm to generate a maze, but it is it generates a maze nonetheless. So the object of a maze, in general, is to get from one point uh, from some entrance to the maze to some exit to the maze. Now what we're going to teach here are generalized strategies for getting out of mazes, um, which is actually kind of pertinent because we're hit in October, right? And you're probably going to end up in hedge mazes or some kind of haunted house or something, right? If, you, if, if you're into those kind of things for October, right? It's about that time of year, all right? So the first generalized strategy for getting out of mazes is the right hand or left hand rule, which simply, and this works basically on a lot on a lot of mazes, assuming like you're, that the exit to a maze isn't like in some kind of weird uh, area, like an elevator or something, right? It's not gonna. So for the type of maze I'm generating, this will this will the right hand rule works, which is that um so I use the green dot to rep this the top left corner uh, to represent the entrance and the bottom right to represent the exit, so green and red. Um, so the way the right hand rule works is that basically we hold on to the wall to our right, so this guy is going to be going this way, so he's going to hold on to the, to the right, to his right, which is going to be the left for us. So you, hold, you hug the wall to the right and you just simply hug that, you just simply hold your hand to the right hand wall and then follow it. So he Put his hand here, right? He's facing down this way. Puts his hand here, and he follows that my mouse cursor, right? And then he hugs that, so he keeps his hand attached to the wall. Goes around the corner, then up here, right? And he just simply follows the uh, the path of the maze with his right hand, right? Attached the um, attached to the wall. Right hand rule, right? And you simply go back and forth, holding on to the wall with your right hand, and eventually we get back to where we started, go down this alleyway, go down here. Right? And look at that, we found the exit. So, and this is because basically you can view this maze as like basically a, 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 a you know, just a path from wall, from wall to another. So we'll be... And the nice thing about it, this rule is that you don't go any, down anything you, you haven't gone down twice. So this is one way to solve your maze. The other way we can solve our maze is using a stack called def for search. And the idea here is that imagine you have some chalk and you have a rope. Okay, you have an unlimited supply of chalk and you have an unlimited uh, rope. So what you're going to do is that we are going is that we decide that we're going to essentially the what makes maze difficult is that you have choices and some of those choices present dead ends with uh, present you with dead ends right and the idea here is that we will walk down an alley with our rope we attach our rope to the entrance so that we don't get lost right and we walk down an alley and if there's a choice to be made we mark we we continue draw we we have our rope but we're also going to draw basically along the floor with our chalk to mark that we've been down this path before. So we get to this dead end, right? We went down straight down, we hit a dead end. So now we use our rope to back up and we back up to where we ha could make another choice, right? We know we didn't make a choice there because we don't see any of our chalk, right? And we go down this, uh, this place with our rope and our chalk, marking the floor as we go, letting out our rope as we go, and we hit another dead end. And so we back up with our rope, right? Oh, we see another place that we didn't go down with our chalk. Sorry, that is unmarked by our chalk. So we go down it with our rope. Oh, dead end. We go down this area. Oh, dead end. Dead end. Boom, dead end. Right? We go and explore these ways in the same way we'd be doing the right-hand rule. But we use this rope and this chalk. Essentially, we mark any area we've been to. And then we use the, and if we hit a dead end, we use the rope to back up. 
And the key here is that what the issue with mazes is what makes mazes like these potentially hazardous things, if you're like a hero going into a dungeon, is the wandering around in circles puzzle. And that's the entire point of having an algorithm to get through these. These algorithms, sure, that you shouldn't be wandering down the same corridor multiple times, right? So, um, and this is used um, called, and we use this strategy, it's called depth first search. Essentially, we go down a corridor as far as we can, and then we back up when we need to back up, right? We go down a, cor we go down a corridor as deeply as we can, and then we backtrack if we if we hit a dead end. Uh, this is extremely common, as we'll see in recursion. We're going to use this strategy, this backtracking strategy, in the next bunch of homeworks. Uh, so when we're solving mazes, when we're solving, um, when we're doing Sudoku, believe it or not, we're going to use the same strategy. Um, so this is just a strategy that you're going to master uh, in the next two weeks or so, um, because it's very. It's a very, uh, as, as you can see, if it can be used on mazes, it can be used on Sudoku, if it can be used on the A-Queen problem in chess, as we'll see, then it is a very versatile strategy. Now, here we're going to do it with stacks. Sometimes, you, and you can do death first, uh, death first search with recursion, but we're going to do this recursive backtracking stra strategy with, um, with stacks first. So um, the way this works is, again, you go down this way, Right, you go down uh, a corridor, and when you need to back up, when you make, hit a mistake, when you hit a dead end, you back up. Right. Okay. Before we go into the code, uh, again, I've as I mentioned a couple times, Wikipedia is a fantastic resource. So we are going to go ahead and just look at what Wikipedia has to offer. Maze, and I'm going to look at maze generating algorithms because believe it or not we use a lot of the same strategies for uh, generating mazes as we do for solving mazes hold on one second I seem to be having issues with my internet connection boom maze generating algorithm way to generate uh, mazes randomly um, so there's a lot of different ways let's actually see is there a maze solving algorithm? Actually, maze solving algorithms. Wikipedia. There we go. It's very common, right? Here's the wall following algorithm for the right hand rule, which is that works if the maze is simply connected. In other words, all the walls are connected together. Um, so, pledge algorithm, Tremex's algorithm, there's a bunch of different. And we're going to be using something that's like the, uh, like this recursive algorithm here. Um, geez. So, doo -doo -doo. yeah, we'll go and look at the mage generation algorithm, which uses the same strategy for building it. And what it does is that basically, this is the same kind of algorithm, but it's used instead of solving a maze to create a maze. What it's doing is that it's going forward and it's just randomly choosing a direction and when it hits a dead end, it backs up as represented by the blue, right? So it backs up until it can hit, make a new choice. So it's going, 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 backing up until it makes a new choice. Right, oh, more space, fill it up. Oh, I can't go any further, so I'm backing up again. So it fills in all the space and it creates these nice, light, uh, nice winding corridors, right? going to go around, fill in all these areas, back up, back up, when I hit a dead end, right, I'm just going to make these corridors, and then back up when I've created kind of a, you know, if I was playing a game of Snake, if I get into a station where I was, I would lose, I back up. That's kind of what it's doing here. And that's how it creates a maze for us. Uh, we can use the same strategy for solving a maze, and that's what we're going to do. All right, and so the nice thing about mazes is that they're wonderfully graphical, as you can see. Um, so you should really check out those Wikipedia pages because they're pretty cool. But um, so let's go ahead and look at our code and look at what our homework is. So I'm going to go ahead and make this another video so that it's going to be easy to find.